Hey everybody, welcome to PlatformCon 2023 and to my talk, how to build golden paths for day 50 and not day one. I'm Kasper from Humanitech and very excited to speak to you today. Let's look at the agenda very quickly. First, I wanna highlight what's wrong with focusing on day one. Could every day be day one? And then we're going to revisit some paths. Before we do that, what is a golden path? Well, a golden path is any procedure in the software development lifecycle that a user can follow with minimal cognitive load that drives standardization. If you ask nine out of 10 platform engineers today, they and you ask them, what is a golden path you could think of? They will probably say the scaffolding workflow that a user would utilize to create a new service or resource. And if you ask them to describe this, they would say you go into a portal or the templating function of a version control system, you hit use this service, it then calls the uh, GitHub templating API, clones the template, executes it, and you have your new service running. This is the focus on day one. That is what I mean by most golden paths are focused on day one. If you look at the entire software development lifecycle, then these approaches focus on the standardization, on the create phase of both a workload and resource. The problem is pretty obvious, actually. Think about the life cycle of a workload, the life cycle of a resource. How long is that thing around? and often for a very, very long time. Years, decades. Remember, the stuff that we're building today is the new legacy. And if we're looking at the entire lifetime of such a component, how helpful is it if we only focusing on standardizing the day one? The actual return on investment for golden paths for platforming is not in day one, it's in day 100, in day 1000. And that doesn't mean that you shouldn't standardize day one as well. But we need to change the way we think about golden paths from that first starting point and that day one focus. And we have to get to a day 1000 focus. Every day should be day one. That's the key mindset change that we need. Golden paths have to be designed alongside the entire life cycle of an application, alongside the entire software development life cycle. And there is only one way of doing this. And that way is by creating app and infrastructure configurations with every single release. We need to treat every day like it's the first day. We need to create and we need to treat every deployment as if we're deploying for the first time. Only if we are doing this, are we actually able to continuously standardize, to continuously yield the benefits of standardization and low cognitive load that we are looking for in platform engineering. How do you do that? For those of you that have uh, heard other talks of me, you know that I'm a big, big fan of dynamic configuration management, the idea of dynamically generating app and infrastructure configurations with every single release. And before we actually look at a couple of golden paths and examples, I want to explain that idea, that architectural approach in a little more detail. Dynamically creating configurations is possible if you have an abstract description of the architecture and the dependencies of your workload. So everything starts with that specification, that abstract specification. We call that a workload specification. The developer describes in an environment agnostic way how their workload depends on other workloads and dependent resources. A workload specification can have many forms. 
most used are code-based workload specifications. There are several open source projects that cover this. And a workload specification, there's exactly one for every workload. It sits next to the source code of the service in the version control system. And a workload specification could, for instance, say, hey, I'm the workload specification of a workload of name Python service. And this Python service has a dependency on a database of type Postgres, DNS of type S3, and on a, uh, a file storage of type S3 and DNS of type DNS. So one file, and it's agnostic, it's environment agnostic. It works across all the possible uh, implementations, all possible environments. Now, the developer experience in this world means I want to run this locally. I do score compose, for instance, and it will convert this into a local config format. And now I actually want to deploy this into a, let's say, staging environment. I throw that, I push that through my normal CI process. It hits the um, CI component. It hits something like a platform orchestrator. And that orchestrator is responsible for actually now dynamically creating the app and infrastructure configurations. It's reading what the developer wants. It's looking at the context. Oh, this is an environment of type staging. It's matching this with the baseline configurations provided by the platform team. And then it creates the app and infrastructure configurations. And once this is done, we have those files. Well, then stuff gets orchestrated and maybe handed over to dedicated CD systems. That's pretty much it. With this approach, you can now design the most beautiful, scalable golden paths alongside the entire software development lifecycle. Let me give you an example. A simple deployment to development. You're a developer. You're doing this several times every day. Nothing about this is really special. And you can do that with every GitHub Actions today. But what's different is that with this approach, every single Git push is a chance to standardize. The workflow doesn't change. We have our source code. The changes get uh, propagated through the CI pipeline. The workload specification is always part of this package. Hits the orchestrator. The orchestrator gets the context. The orchestrator executes a read, match, create, deploy pattern and says, OK, well, let me actually treat this as if it would be day zero, create everything and make sure that the um, infrastructure is in the right state and the application configs are uh, created. So why would you care if you can already do that with any CI flow? Well, because assume something changes at scale. You want to have different labels and annotations. You want to upgrade something. You want to change your security posture. Because we are actually working against baseline templates, we're basically scaffolding every single uh, release cycle. You can just apply those changes to the baseline configurations and they will propagate throughout your workloads, all of your workloads and across the organization with the next deployment. Let's take uh, another example. Let's say we want to have an, another environment. And now, because we are creating things dynamically, no change in the workflow for the developer, we are taking the Workload specification, again, we're sending that through the CI pipeline. Now, the only thing that changes is the context. It hits the orchestrator component. We see read, match, create, deploy, and you have your new stuff running. Again, possible because of dynamic configuration management. Let's look at an example for the platform engineering team from the platform engineering perspective. And let's say we want to update Postgres from version 14 to version 15. Yes, there is a golden path for that, absolutely. Now, in this world, because we have single source of truth and that, um, that uh, continuous generation, we can post the simple question, what services depend on what resource definition? In this world, there aren't 80 different versions of Postgres. There may be three or four, and they get reused with every single deployment. So we're asking that question. We get the answer from the orchestrator API, for instance. Here are the dependent uh, resource definitions on um, uh, 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 services that utilize a specific resource definition, the only thing we do is we update that resource definition. We update our baseline configurations. 
send that against the orchestrator, read, match, create, deploy. We auto enforce the deployments across all workloads and the new version of the Postgres is updated. It's really as simple. Now let's uh, look at one more example. What does it mean to go off the golden path? And let's assume we want to add an ArangoDB as a developer. The beauty of this approach is that this is totally possible. So it's using a design principle I call golden path over cages. Developers should be able to use the golden path, but there should be a clear way how to leave that path. Let's say the developer needs a RangoDB, but there is no global rule on how a RangoDB is actually created. That's not a problem. We're just adding a new resource definition. Post that to the orchestrator. The orchestrator now knows how to create a RangoDB, read, match, create, deploy, and a RangoDB is there. That resource definition, that baseline configuration could be a simple Terraform file, plus the information when to use uh, this Terraform file. It could be a cross-plane file, it could be Pulumi, it could be whatever. We just need to follow that logic of dynamic configuration management. And that brings us to an incredibly interesting point. Platform engineering, if we do it well, the design of golden paths is actually about structuring repositories more than anything else. There are developer-owned repositories, the workload with the workload specification, the source code, and all of those things. And then there are platform engineering-owned repositories resource definition, baseline configurations, infrastructure as code, workload profiles, automation, compliance, all of those things. Now, if we think about it this way, if a developer leaves the golden path and creates their own path, they can now actually take that path on a code-based format and send that to the platform engineering team and say, hey, I've left the path, but I think this should be a golden path. This should be a global path. And all the developer, uh, all the platform engineering team has to do is to accept that path globally and start supporting it. And this way, we actually develop the platform almost decentrally. We are developing the golden paths based on the user need. And we're, we stop guessing what the user might need, what the platform might look like. We are getting from a prescriptive mindset to a product mindset. And this is really what platform engineering is about. Now, golden paths are good for everybody because they make things so much easier. In this world, adding an S3 bucket is exactly two lines of code, nobody else involved. Spinning up environment, one Git push. We had that example updating a Postgres from version 14 to 15, one file. Understanding the immutable difference between um, states, between deplo uh, deployments, because we're regenerating everything. That's a single command to run a diff. What's running where? One API call. That is the power of dynamic configuration management. That is the power of designing golden paths in a decentralized way along the entire software development lifecycle. I hope this was helpful. Enjoy PlatformCon 2023 and see you very soon in the community and some of the next events.